Hey everyone, Spanners here. I've got possibly the coolest interview we've ever had here on the show. Here on Mist Apex, obviously we're massive motorsport fans, but we're also keen sim racers of varying talent. So if you tell me there's a movie about a sim racer that ended up on real tracks around the world because of how good a sim racer he was, I would say, hook me up. Well, there is such a movie. It's called Gran Turismo, based on the real-life GT Academy that took the best sim racers in the world and put them on track. Joining me is that sim racer turned deity, Jan Maldenbrough. Hey, how's it going, Jan? Very good, Bob. And also joining me today, we have the actor that brought it to life on the big screen. We've got Archie Medekwe. Hello, Archie. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Archie, I've seen the film. Archie, you were absolutely fantastic. It really did just paint a picture of what a normal, relatable guy Jan was, just with a dream in his heart. Oh, thanks. That's really kind of you. Thank you very much. And uh, I would say, have you? Did you stalk him to find that out? Because if I was, if I was having a film made about me, I would make sure that I also got portrayed as a very nice, relatable guy. <laughs> well, I think spending just five minutes with Jan, you realise that pretty quickly. No stalking required. But I did. But I did uh, spend a lot of time with Jan before filming. As soon as I attached to the project, I immediately reached out. We jumped on the phone, and we just started talking incredibly honestly and openly you know I was just so grateful for how for how the trust that he kind of put in me and how open and honest he was with me about his life and I, I just wanted to know everything even if it wasn't going to be in the film I just asked mm. him to start from the start tell me about your life and then those conversations just didn't stop Yam was on on set with us the entire time he did all of his own stunt driving and so it just meant that he was this endless pool of knowledge and any time I had any doubts, any questions, any queries, I mean, he was there to answer them. I mean, it was it was dream come true situation. And Jan, how did he how did he do to see yourself or a copy of yourself on the big screen? Must be amazing. Oh, she nailed it. Um, I've only recently watched the movie, and uh, of course, <laughs> I know what's happened because it's my life, and I was there. But uh, yeah, he did an absolutely fantastic job. Um, to have my life put onto screen, um, part of my life put onto screen is uh, very unusual, a blessing as well. Um, and I'm hopefully people can take some, it can spark some thinking within people to uh, take some positivity out of it. So uh, yeah, it's it's been fantastic. As a wannabe sim racer and carter, like I now assume that I'm definitely going to end up on real life tracks and and at Le Mans. I'm sure it will definitely happen. It will, for me. dude. I uh, think it will. Yeah. Definitely will. God dream big, man. God dream. Big. And this is and this is what I was going to ask you because in all Hollywood movies, they always say to you, "What you really need to do is you just need to believe." All those losers didn't believe hard enough when you were actually at the academy or even qual uh, qualifying for it. Jan, did it actually feel possible at the time? I, so I saw it with, I explained it with Doors. So I was presented with a door with GT Academy in position of my life, just dropped out of uni. And this door had kind of, uni was closed. So I was like, okay, grand GT Academy. Okay, that door, let's see how far we can go. Let's open that one. And then let's open the other ones. And then of course one, and then it presented with this, this uh, childhood dream and just to see how far I could go. But the intention was, my intention was to see how far I can go, but it was, I never thought I could win. Only up until the last day where, really? the last race where I had a chance, I thought I had a chance of winning. It wasn't like I'm going to win. It was like, I have a chance. Uh, it was a very strange mindset, but it's done me well. But I was very sure ever since I was probably 11 that being a racing driver is what I want to do with my life. And if an opportunity presented itself, I'm all in. Uh, I had to wait yeah. a long time for that to happen and be very lucky as well. But I never let that candle, that little fire, go out completely because life throws mud and dirt and darkness at you. But uh, it was always that. And I was at the right place at the right time and then put in the work. You obviously believed exactly the right amount to get you to to where you were. But I, uh, as a as a you know keen sim racer myself, you know I was watching the hand movements and the racing in the cockpit. Archie, I have to say, you were incredibly believable as somebody you know facing the physical shock of a, a, a sports car. So I do wonder. I know I know Jan was doing some stunt driving, but how much did they 
get you involved or bully you into doing some track racing or some sim racing? Any time you see me in the car, I'm in the car going at full racing speed. There is not, there is no shot where it's static or going slower. I'm at full racing speed. And so and the, w the shot, all of those things, all of that is real. It's real. Uh, that is very, very real. It was truly one of the most difficult things I've ever done in my life. Sim racing wise, I mean, I was I, months before I got there, they sent me a whole GT set up and I had an unbelievable racing instructor, David Perel, who had a very similar story to Jan, was a sim racer and I races for Ferrari. And we would just every single day, we would just practice, 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 because it is all, it's just repetition with, with GT and just learning wow. those tracks and learning those corners. And I would have him in, when I was in the car, I'd have him in one ear reminding me like hand placements and, 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 and just a, a, anything that I needed to do to make it more believable. I was constantly being told. And, uh, and then, and then, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the car, the car, the car, the car, the car, just, it was just, it was, uh, you, I don't know how much money you would pay me to do it again, but it's, uh, <laughs> I'm glad yeah. I did it. The film's definitely worth it. I'm sort of disappointed. Like, Archie, that was such good acting. How did they recreate that? Well, they threw me around in a sports car until I was terrified. Basically, it was not... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, there was no acting. Like, it's all my sweat. It's all, Love it. all that G-force. I mean, when my face moves, it's because my face is moving at 160, 70 miles an hour. It was just ridiculous craziness. And, and Jan, how close to, to real was that? Because obviously you would have faced that shock from a sim rig into real life race cars. The film really portrays it as, oh dear, wh what, what have I got myself into? Yes, um, however, uh, you know, getting into GT Academy and winning it, my mindset was, okay, whatever is required of me to be the best I can be in racing with all my mentors, I'm gonna have to do that. It's fine, let's go through that. So yes, it's extremely taxing on the body. Yes, it's very intense with, uh, press um very intense with racing on circuits you have rivals you have the self-evaluation the, the self-doubt at, at times as well everything so it's uh but i was prepared for that because this is what i want to do with my life it gives me purpose mm -hmm. so with all that going on actually driving the car the bit you love was probably you know you get in the car and you go okay well i've got this bit i know what i'm doing here so, you know, there's a saying in, uh, it was talked to a lot of drivers and uh, before the race, there's so much stuff we've got to do. And the moment where it's the most peaceful and most calm is the moment just before the start of the race. Mm. You put on your helmet, everybody goes away. All the team go away, all the press go away, all the mechanics and interviewers and just you strapped in your car, really tight with your helmet on. It's just like, ah, engine's just about <laughs> to get, engine's on. You're not yet racing, but it's like, ah, Finally, I can do what I want to do yeah. and do the best thing. And uh, it's, it, for me, it's, it's bliss. It really is bliss. It's the best, best. Well, well, how did you rate Archie once he you know, got thrown in the cars and got, got given his sim rig? So uh, Archie, seeing what he went through, um, you know, Archie, these cars are small. They're not, uh, they're not big cars and they're made out of carbon. And usually, well, all the time, when a driver sits in the car, we have a seat, a nice uh, kind of foam padded seat. Archie's very tall. Archie could yeah. use one of those seats. So he sat on bare carbon going at that speed, being strapped in. So he's feeling everything. Oh, to make him shorter? What? In order for him to fit in the car without the helmet. Oh, wow. The helmet was touching at some point. Has to sit on, on dry carbon. So you know what a race car is like. It's millimeters from the ground. He's feeling everything through a carbon chassis. No, no compression or anything. So, and he's acting as well. And he, he knows needs to know where the corners go and got lines. He's very claustrophobic in the cameras. So I have mass. He has respect for me. I have huge respect for for you doing that because <laughs> you looked like you'd been through some tough stuff. I'd been through the wars, I truly had, but we're, we're on the other side. Well, well, as a five foot seven gentleman, I'm glad you were uncomfortable in that car and hit your head <laughs> on the cockpit. That makes me I'm feel so really good. happy. Listen, hey, gonna hey. I don't know, to, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I tell you what, Archie, people are gonna see you in this film and they're gonna want you in their movies. But, um, you know, this young, this early in your career, working with huge stars like 
Orlando Bloom. I want to ask you, like, you know, what's he like to work with? Because he's he's talented, charming, ridiculously good looking, even in his forties. Give me something. Tell me he had like milk breath or something. I don't know what to tell you, bud. He's lovely. I mean, it Man, just is. And I'm and I, I'm sorry. It's true. Like everyone is at the end of the day when you get everyone's at work and you know everyone cares. So I was going to film like this. It was a lovely thing. Everybody just really was so excited to be there. And everyone just, everyone was just on great form. It was just so lovely. So there was no, you know, there's no time to to worry about who, who you know, what, who somebody is or what somebody's done or et cetera. Everyone is just locked into character <laughs> and how do we make this film the best film it could possibly be? So all of that stuff is, is you know, this, it goes out the window pretty quickly. Everyone was lovely because uh, Jamon Hanso completely, I hope this is not a spoiler, but I completely believed him as like the, the stern dad. And I can't imagine that. Is it? Kindest man in the world. I mean, he could so not. So they say cut. <laughs> and he is just smiling, laughing. I mean, he, you could not find a nicer human. Truly, he is the loveliest, loveliest person. I would work with him again and again and again. He is just great. It was a great dynamic between between all of you, and of course, you know my my kids got very excited. I haven't seen it, but Stranger Things, the the dad in that, and when you've got like a a, a mentor guiding someone through, and you you realise that you know people are, are trying to impart knowledge, but also they've got their own stories as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the that's the really lovely clever thing about the script is you know it's a it's an underdog story for Jan, but it's also an underdog story for Jack, and they kind of find this harmony between the two of them threw that together it's, it's lovely it really was and i'm going to get a bit star trek convention-y here for for yan you know when they say uh in episode 54 the 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 laser light from the photons okay um in the movie archie's using a logitech csl a direct drive which is at the moment you know, it's really good value entry level direct drive about five or eight newton meters of force feedback which is significant you can feel the feedback from the tires but when you were starting out doing sim racing and this was all around 2010 like you didn't have access to anything probably as good as that. So I had access to a, um, a Fanatec Turbo S wheel, um, which was belt driven. Belt, right. And I'd had that so less, less force. Yeah, I had that less than six months. Uh, so I'd only had a wheel six months when I entered GT Academy. And I only had that wheel and wow. pedals because I was so fed up of playing with the, place, with the controller um, that I wanted to take the experience to the next level. So with the money that I had as a gift, well, not as a gift, but my GCSE results, my A-level results, my parents gave me some money thanks to my kind of average results. And I used that £300 to buy this wheel and pedals. And the frame that I used to qualify, I built that in school, um, which is represented in the... You see it in the wow. film, the frame that's it. It's, a, it's exact. Is it the actual one or a replica? No, a replica. It's a replica. It's the exact replica. Literally the exact replica. And it's painted okay. in a certain way as well because I designed it in school um, and halfway outside of school because I was adamant I wanted my own rig. And it's painted... Uh, the design brief given to me while I was in school was design something in an Art Deco style. I'd already designed it. Nice. But I was like, oh, okay, how can I make this Art Deco? Okay, I'll just paint it in some weird Art Deco style. And it's exactly the same as it is in the movie. So I'm very happy about that. And he only got a B. And he got a B. Oh, and he got a B. Ridiculous. Changed his life and he got a B. To be honest, I'm glad the story went that way because when you sort of paused for a moment, I thought it was going to be, well I, well, I robbed it. So I'm glad it had a happier ending than that because obviously there's some, there's some scenes with Archie uh, getting, in, getting in, in a little bit of trouble and having to use his driving skills to get out of them. Uh, was any of that, you know, was that real, Jan? Were you a bit of a, a, a maverick? Mm, the stuff has happened before GT Academy with friends. Um, that's exact maybe not but uh, with the police yeah things have happened we've all got history well it made yeah. for a we all have it made for a fun history. start to the film <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really good and one of the things about the film is it's um, it's an assault on the senses it really focuses in on on the car Archie and it's all about you know being in the car having those those lines in front of you and, and imagining you know the, the racing line that you'd see on your on your PlayStation and trying to adapt that to track, but I just I just loved. It's not really a question, is it? I loved the fact that it was just a pure motorsport assault on you in your cinema seat. Yeah, that's I mean that's that's what that's 
the genius of Neil Blomkamp. I think he was so uh, so adamant. That's part of the reason why he wanted everything to be done practically because he wanted everything to feel to feel so real. He wanted you to feel the heat, feel the speed. And I think you really do. I mean, it's kudos to him and the um, our unbelievable DP and the Camops. Like we just we just were able to get in so close to really feel to really feel every kind of every breath of those cars. It's amazing. And I know there's going to be some wish fulfillment here for from my viewers and listeners looking at Jan's story. And so we were talking about your your belt driven wheel. When you got on track, how much of your sim racing experience and how you felt your belt driven wheel in your hands, how much of that helped you when you got in the car or, or did you go, oh, wow, no, no, this is totally different? Well, it's all I had. So I was surprised how normal it felt, the transition going from, say, that to jumping in the GTR at Silverstone for the first time, knowing the circuit. That's something I've just realized as well. I knew Silverstone like yes like i do today but uh the way that the car handled the way that the car would pitch in your in corners your throttle brake inputs the your student it's all that's all i had i never did carton or anything like that the only added sensation which i needed to tune with what i was getting through my hands was the vibration through my backside and my back it was combining that that added sensation and trying to align it with my vision and what i'm feeling through my hands and that took that's not easy to develop straight away. So it took a while to trust it as well, um, to know where the limit is. You have to go over it and mm. kind of peg it back. And just to get those sensors in a line, it's a, it's a bit of a journey, and especially with the eyes as well. So, but the way the car acts, it's, uh, I, was, I was kind of like, oh, it's working. Okay, I have to do this. The car normally does this. Okay, it's doing this in real life. Okay, cool. I can trust that. I'll, I'll remember that. Nice. And it just worked. You know. And uh, now people would take it, not granted, but they just assume, yeah, if I drive this particular car on here, it's going to behave exactly like that in real life. And it does. That's just testament to uh, well, uh, yeah. the technology of Gran Turismo, the attention to the detail that they have. So I'm I'm no good, but I have had a driver coach, you know, teach me how to detect uh, understeer, oversteer when I'm in the car, you know, it goes light, you're understeering and you can feel like the grip up as you get to the edge of adhesion. And when I've taken that onto a kart track, I've literally gone, wow, it, it feels like that. And you just go, oh my goodness, you know, the, the sim isn't a complete, complete waste of time, Nick. What would you know? Um, but one line in the movie, I need to know whose idea this was, is when Archie, uh, you corrected a, a friend in the, in the, in the movie that it's, it's not a game, it's a sim. And that is something all us sim racers say at home over and over again and you know i run these big tournaments and 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 there's 200 people there they're all treating it seriously and my wife will say are you off to play your your little game and you go no it's not a game it's a sim but whose idea was that i'm guessing that was i was jason or zach so i don't think that was nice. improvised i think that was in there the entire time yeah it's a conversation we've had uh, as well in person with uh, with jason it's uh, an i remember it's uh, it's it's a sim it needs to be a sim it's not a game it's not arcade. It's not, you know, something you, you know, it's a simulator. So yes, that was uh, that was in the that was in there. Uh, to Jan, to Archie, and uh, on behalf of, I'm going to speak for the whole sim racing community. Thank you for making this movie. Thank you for representing our world, and good luck with the rest of the tour. <laughs>